Hello, welcome to First Light Optics. My name's Chris Locke, and today we're gonna to be talking about finder scopes and their importance for helping you use your telescope. This is a finder scope an optical finder scope sitting on top of this main telescope and its job is to help you find objects as the name suggests. And the way it does that is by having a much wider field of view than your main telescope. So what might be outside the field of view in your main telescope will lie inside the field of view with your smaller finder scope and therefore you can center it and then look into your main telescope to get a more higher power view of that object. Now, there's two different types of finder. There's an optical finder scope like this one. This is an 8x50, meaning the objective lens is 50mm and it magnifies eight times. And you can also get a zero magnification, what we call a red dot finder, that simply projects a red dot onto the sky. So both of these work absolutely fine. They've got their strengths, which we'll discuss at a different point. But the main purpose of both of these is to make using the main telescope much easier. So the first thing you need to do when you get your telescope out of the box and you're setting it up in terms of the finder is to install it. Now, if it's an optical finder like this, it will have a stalk, there'll be a rubber O-ring inside there that you just need to slide on and pop it in a groove and then this bit here is spring loaded. So you pull that out, slide the finder through until it meets the rubber O-ring. And then you can make adjustments to these screws here to align the position of this with your main telescope. So we've got a finder shoot on the main telescope and a foot on the stalk. So we need to slide that in there, tighten it up. And at this stage, our telescope isn't aligned with the finder scope. So that's what we want to do to get everything set up. And it's best to do this in the daytime, preferably when the sun's not about, so dusk's a good time to do it, or pointing in the opposite direction of the sun. And you want to be pointing at a distant object that's very well defined, like a, like a sign or a TV aerial, something like that. So you want to use a low power eyepiece in the telescope, eventually find it, because it can be quite tricky with a narrow field of view, center the, for example, TV aerial in the eyepiece, and then make adjustments to these two screws, which position the orientation of the finder scope until you can see the same thing in the middle of the finder scope as you can in the main telescope. And then you're pretty much set I mean, you may find that when you go out at night and you're using more powerful eyepieces that it's not quite aligned because with a more powerful eyepiece, you're, you're kind of looking more precisely. So at that point, you can just fine tune the finder scope to get it bang on. But having a finder scope, whether it be an optical finder scope or a red dot finder scope, is going to make using your telescope a lot easier because believe it or not, it's difficult to find the moon without a finder scope. You can see it right up in front of you, plain as day or night, beaming away at you, but you try and point your telescope at it, unless it's a really wide field telescope and it can be quite difficult. Now, another tip is to not forget to turn your red dot finder off. The optical finder doesn't have any batteries, it's just purely optics, but this has a little battery there and when you first get one of these, it will have a plastic tab that you kind of pull out to activate the finder scope. But always remember to turn it off at the end because there's nothing worse than getting back out the next session and then realizing your finder scope's dead and you need to replace the battery. Uh, so yeah, that's a little tip there, but hopefully that's gonna help people get underway using and enjoying their telescopes. If you've got any questions, we're at hand at questions at firstlightoptics.com so you can send your messages to us via that email and until next time clear skies <laughs>